Greetings, everyone. If you have seen some of my other videos on the channel, um, you have seen a camera that looks very much like this one before. Uh, this is an AB Cans uh, PTZ camera, and I have reviewed a very similar camera um, on this channel already um, that was sort of a full review of, of all of its kind of camera and features. I'll link to that um, in the description below. This isn't that because almost everything about this camera is the same as the one I reviewed previously, except this has a feature that I was really excited to look at, and that is what AB Cans calls their AI auto tracking. And, you know, I'm not sure how much AI is actually involved, but it's a trendy word today, so I'm guessing that's why they use it. But basically what this camera does is it has facial recognition, or so they say, um, you know, similar to how um, your uh, DSLR or other cameras might be able to track faces, um, and it will actually move the camera um, with the presenter uh, as they move across a stage. Um, in the uh, literature for this, I think they call that the instructor tracking camera. Uh, so their basic use case for this would be in a classroom um, where you may have an instructor down front that is moving back and forth. Um, of course, I'm curious about it for other kind of venues. You know, if you have a church uh, and you want to check the, the pastor as they move um, or, you know, other kind of meetings or performances like that. Um, I'm curious about how well it does and what the setup procedure is. Um, one note, um, if you did see that other review, one of the things I talked about is one way in which these cameras are limited is you can only configure them with software. There's no website backend um, or anything like that that a lot of other products use, um, which is fine, but that software is also only for Windows. So if you're a pure Mac user, um, then you're a bit out of luck. You're going to have to track down a Windows PC in order to set this up. And my understanding is that's true for the auto tracking as well. You set that up um, inside the software. So I'm really curious how that's going to work uh, because depending on how often you need to go back into the software uh, to, to deal with it, uh, that might be a little bit annoying, uh, but we'll see. All right, so I'm going to uh, position this camera uh, a little place else in the room, um, fire up the software, uh, and then we will see how it goes. All right, I have the AB Cans uh, camera CMS software up and loaded and the camera added. Um, I showed you how to do that in my previous AB Cans review, so if you're curious about that, um, go ahead and check that out. Um, but I've also positioned my camera um, a little further away uh, so that uh, we can kind of give it a test um, from that location when we get to that point. Uh, but first, let me show you how we use the software. All right, so I've got my camera added here and selected. Um, in the thing and then I'm going to go to main view um, and so if the camera wasn't already pulling up as you can see here it is it's pulling it up uh, if it wasn't already doing that I would double click on this and that would pull it up all right so the first thing we're going to do is actually set a couple of presets now the instructions for getting the auto tracking up and running aren't 100% in intuitive but once you've done them they actually kind of make sense um, but we're going to set a two presets. We're going to set preset zero, uh, which is where you want the camera to go if it loses its tracking. So say it is successfully face tracking somebody uh, and then it loses the tracking. Where do you want it to go? Uh, the instructions recommend going to kind of like a wide panorama shot. So, you know, something that shows maybe the whole front of the classroom or the whole front of the church or whatever it is. Um, and then there's preset one, uh, which is where you want it to start uh, looking uh, for uh, something to auto track. Uh, so you would probably focus that um, on like the lecture stand or the pulpit or something like that. So that's gonna be a tighter shot where you expect somebody to stand. Uh, and then when somebody enters that shot um, and it detects a face, then it knows to start auto tracking. So first, let's set those two presets. All right, so this is the home shot. Um, it's the kind of wide shot for the camera. I'm gonna just tweak it a little bit here. Um, not need to do much, but just so we know it's doing something. Um, so that's preset zero. So we're gonna go ahead and set preset zero. All right, and now we're gonna set where I want it to start um, auto tracking. So I'm gonna put this up a little bit. Uh, and say that I'm going to want it to be, you know, start doing it about here. All right, so we're gonna go preset one, and we are going to set 
that preset. All right, next thing we're we'll doing is we're gonna come into settings here, um, and we have a couple of things we need to set. Um, first is a lower boundary. Now, what this is, uh, is uh, basically it will not look for faces below this line. So if you are doing like a wide shot of a classroom space, you may, you know, below this line have students or something and you don't want to detect those faces, or this may be like the back of the heads of your congregation or whatever it is. So you want to set it, you know, so that it won't auto track unless it detects a face above this line. So we'll just set it right about there for our purposes in testing. It doesn't really matter. Um, so we're going to do that. We're going to return that one. Um, and then the other thing you can do uh, is over here in basic two, um, which is tilt motion. You have a choice if you want it to track, what is tracking, if you only want it to go um, side to side or if you want to let it go up and down as well. So we'll go ahead and turn that on uh, just to try it. And then you have other things that you can, if you can, how sensitive you want it to be, how fast you want the tracking to go, um, you know, that sort of thing. You can set as you want. Now, this is really actually kind of neat. And this is one of the things I was most curious about, and I'm glad to see this power on state. So you can set it to basically start tracking as soon as the camera turns on, which means as soon as the camera turns on, it's going to go to that preset one and start looking for a face. This is super handy because that means if you get things set up the way you want them, you will not have to come back and you know use the software again, um, unless for whatever reason it loses the settings. So uh, we'll just leave that off for now. So I got everything set the way that we need it to. Um, I'm going to save this because I want it to try the tilt as well. Um, we got our lower bound set, so we're going to exit out of here. Um, so yeah, we should be ready now um, to start tracking. So if that works, when I stand up and put my face in this general area, um, hopefully it's going to start tracking me and we'll see how that goes. And we're coming into the tracking shot and hopefully it's seeing my face and appears to be. So if I move over here, it's gonna follow me over here. Um, this light's gonna get in my way, so I'm not giving it as a lot of room to work with, unfortunately, where we are right now. Um, I'm gonna go over here. All right, there we are. If I go out of the shot. It returns to that wide shot to look to see if it can find me. That is pretty darn neat. All right, so this is a kind of a limited test because this space isn't very big. Right now, that camera is only uh, probably about 10, 12 feet away from me, which isn't always going to be the practical thing. Uh, so in a moment here, I'm going to move it into a much larger space uh, where we can actually have it make it zoom in uh, a whole lot more and see if that changes anything about its accuracy. So let's go check that out now. All right, as you can see, I've got the camera now set up in the big room, um, and it is a good 50 or so feet away, and I have the auto tracking set to almost the max of the camera zoom range. Uh, and I've also kind of tweaked our lights a little bit, so I'm gonna be moving in and out of some lighter areas and some darker areas, really trying to give this auto tracking uh, a bit of a test. Now, I did have to make a couple of tweaks to the settings on the camera. I had to increase the tracking sensitivity uh, and the tracking speed. Uh, so there was a little finesse work to be done. But as you can see, once the adjustments were made, uh, it did a pretty good and successful job kind of smoothly and thoroughly tracking my movements uh, across the front area of our space. Uh, overall, I would say I'm pretty pleased uh, with the results and they honestly exceed my expectations. Now, this is the 20X zoom camera and this is about as far back uh, as you're probably going to be able to get that to work. Um, if you want more than that, you are probably going to need to step up to something uh, a little bit bigger in the zoom category. 
Now, also just a note, uh, the video that you've been seeing of the camera um, is basically a screen recording of the back end software that controls it. This is not indicative of the quality that you're gonna get, say coming out of the HDMI or the SDI port. Um, again, that's in my previous video, I covered a lot of that um, on the AV cans and because the optics in this camera are the same as that, um, I expect it to perform in a very similar way. So, Overall, I'd say I'm pretty impressed um, by it. Uh, I would say with this camera in particular, if you could get it a little bit closer, you're gonna be a little happier uh, with its results. Um, but both a near test and a more difficult far test, um, I would say it honestly exceeded my expectations. One thing you will note is I, as when I walked out of frame, um, while the camera will pan, you know, side to side and tilt, if you enable that tilt function, it does not zoom uh, in response to the person. Uh, so you could have a little bit of change of distance between you and the camera, uh, but if it gets to be too much, um, as you can saw, uh, it kind of loses sight of you and returns back uh, to where it was before. Um, so if that's a concern, uh, you're just gonna need to figure out, like, the, the widest possible shot um, to accommodate everything you need. All right, so overall, AV cans, AI auto tracking camera. Um, yeah, the AI is a bunch of marketing hype, um, but all in all, it does actually seem to work, uh, do pretty much what they say it does. Uh, and I do like the fact that you don't have to load up the software every time. Uh, if you get it set up the way you want it, bolt it into place, um, you should be able to just turn it on and it should start tracking for you. I would, though at the same time, things happen, keep the software close at hand in case you need to jump in there real quick. Um, or you could always manually control it. It is a full PTZ camera and the way that all PTZ cameras work, you can hook up your controller to it um, and, and do that as well. Um, for me, for my money, I would spend a little bit extra uh, also and get the NDI version. So this is the non-NDI version at the time of filming. I think it's on sale on Amazon for $6.99. Uh, the eight, the NDI version is an extra 200 bucks because that's how it is. Um, it's about 899 uh, for the 20X zoom. Um, either price is good. Um, always opt for the NDI if you can. All right, well, I hope you found this video helpful and useful. If you have any questions, make sure to reach out to me uh, through the comments or at foundry.dev. Uh, and until I see you again, have a great day. Hey everybody, if you found that video helpful, please hit like and subscribe and also check the video description for links to any products you've seen in today's videos. Doing that really helps support this channel. Also, don't forget to leave a comment with any questions that you may have. A lot of the content I do is based directly on the questions of the feedback you give. So keep that coming and I will keep making them. Thank you.